Humans, they are the most intelligent species to ever walk the earth. They have dominated and took over nearly every part of the planet. They are more advanced than any other creature around. They have mastered technology and with it have created things that no other species has done before. Humans have even learned how to domesticate other species. However, I always ask myself, who are we? How were we created? Why are we made? What makes us human? The Psychological Answer Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs and the Big Five Theory One thing that I believe in when it comes to making us human is our thoughts and emotions. However, I am always wondering what makes us think, what causes our thoughts, and what makes us operate. I believe that these two theories at the top help answer this question. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs is a motivational theory that states that five categories of human needs is what dictates human behavior. This is important because it is often used to show how workers and employees can be supported to reach the highest level of success. The same importance is also applied to individuals. The principles of the theory, aka the hierarchy of needs. So this is a list of each of the five principles which are necessary needs for humans to operate. As you can see from the bottom, we start at physiological. We start from safety needs. We go to love and belonging needs. We go to self-esteem needs. And then we finally go to self-actualization needs. What happens if these needs are not met? Abraham Maslow, the creator of the theory, has stated that if a lower need is not met, then higher ones will be ignored. For example, if someone has no sense of love or belonging, then their self-esteem levels will be low or next to none. Missing one of the principal needs can impact how we function and work as humans. This will lead to how we behave and, and how our personalities can change. This leads into my next theory. The Big Five Theory Our lives are impacted through our experiences, and if our needs are not met, then our personalities and behaviors will be impacted. Even though humans exhibit varying degrees of personality, they can still be classified based on their traits. All of these classifications can be identified with traits of extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. These are the personality types. As you can see, the personality types include neuroticism, which has stable and unstable traits, extroversion, uh, which has extrovert and introvert traits, openness, which has open to experience and not open to experience traits, agreeableness, which has agreeable traits and antagonistic traits, and conscientiousness, which has conscientious and undirected traits. Um, the traits themselves include uh, unstable, worrying, vulnerable, self-pitying, impatient, stable, calm, hardy, self-satisfied, patient, extrovert, sociable, fun-loving, talkative, and the introvert, reserved, sober, quiet, and self-controlled, just to list a few. How Motivation Makes Us Human These two theories relate to one theme, motivation. Our thoughts, our personalities, our behaviors, our actions, our needs, all correlate with motivation. Motivation is what drives us to operate and function in the end of the day. Without motivation, we wouldn't be able to get up, work, take care of ourselves and others. Without motivation, we wouldn't be thinking about how to move on with our lives and think about the future. Without a motivation, there would be no change. The anthropological answer, evolutionism and natural selection. Another thing that I believe makes us human is how we are constantly developing. I am always wondering why we are always finding ways to move forward with our lives. Why are some people better at adapting than others? Two theories that are listed above have helped me answer this. Evolutionism. Evolutionism is an anthropological theory that all species gradually change over time. This includes physical changes like the development of opposable thumbs, the growth of the brain literally, and the loss of hair. However, these are also cu cultural changes. This involves societies and their change. 
The theory claims that societies, according to one universal order of cultural evolution, but at different rates. This includes societies of today, modern societies, are constantly changing and culturally and physically. Some individuals have switched their beliefs into different cultures, such as the business culture, and others have switched their beliefs to other religions entirely. Others have changed physically, with people today attempting to change their genders by replacing their sexual organs. One thing I am always questioning, what happens if we don't evolve or don't evolve in the right ways? What might happen? Natural selection slash survival of the finish. Natural selection is a process by which animals and plants best adapt to their environment to survive and reproduce similar offspring. This was a theory that was made by Charles Darwin, he, and he discovered that the species that were able to evolve and adapt survive, causing species to pass on these survival tactics over centuries, over generations, allowing successful growth and development. An example of this is when Darwin traveled to the Galapagos Islands, where a small group of finches, and that each one of the same species had some form of a difference from each other. One had a small beak for sucking nectar, while another had a large beak used for cracking large seeds, showing that if you are better adapted, you have a better chance at survival than others. How change makes us human. These two theories revolve around evolution, which is a big part of anthropology. However, evolution also ties into change, and something that almost all humans do is change and adapt, which can be due to their experiences in life, their personalities, their cultures, and their society. Without change, we will never move past our problems, and we will continue to stay in the past. Without change, we will never learn to accept the different cultures in the world around us. Without change, we won't survive as a society and individuals. In conclusion, in the end, I realized that the two things in the world that make us human is motivation and change. Those two concepts are important to how we operate as individuals and as a society.